Hey YouTube, welcome back. So I want to talk about Will Smith and Janet Hubert making peace and reconciling after a nearly 30 year feud. And you know, it all came and started from, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, but, you know, I watched the, you know, Red Table Talk takeover that Will Smith did um, with his therapist, or at least a therapist, I don't know if it's his specifically, um, and, you know, I watched the clips that they showed of him speaking with Janet Hubert, you know, and, allow and allowing Janet to, you know, speak her piece, you know, and get a lot of things off of her chest. I wonder how this all came about, you know, was Will Smith just like, oh, you know, I want ratings for this reunion show. Because I feel like this reunion show could get ratings with or without Janet. I think a lot of people are still interested, you know, in the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So, you know, but of course, Janet it being on it would bring more ratings to it, though, right? So you think he was interested in the ratings or do you think that he was, you know, truly interested in trying to, you know, reconcile, make peace, um, bury the hatchet, and, you know, get some healing, you know, hmm, you know, I feel like it may be a mixture of both, <laughs> you know, I think it may be a mixture of both, I'll say that, um, but, yeah, I didn't know that it was that serious for Janet, um, you know, she did say that, you know, she was kind of like in a bad place in her marriage. I think she was, uh, uh, for what I heard, was in an abusive uh, marriage at one point. Um, and also she was having problems at her job, too. Thus, kind of like not having like a safe space, you know, place where she could feel comfortable since she wasn't feeling comfortable in her home. But she also wasn't feeling comfortable at work either. Um, <clears throat> and how, you know... She ended up losing her home and how like that reputation followed her for a long time and still to this day it still follows her, um, you know, and of course she spoke about being, you know, a black woman in Hollywood and how, you know, the stigma of being difficult, especially um, with it attached to a black woman is the kiss of death and, you know, as well being a darker skinned black woman in Hollywood and the scarcity of roles and it already being difficult just being that alone. You know? And Will, you know, he let her speak her, her piece. He didn't, you know, interrupt her or, you know, try to justify anything. He just was more so accepting. Um, was he accepting because he just wants her to be on the show, you know, and just wants some good um, promo. Or did he just really want to just accept responsibility for the role that he played in the situation? I'm still wondering what exactly triggered this exactly. You know, what exactly started all of this? Like, what, like, like was somebody being, like, rude on the set or something? Was it a, a joke that was misinterpreted what because i heard in a live stream you know <laughs> just take that with a grain of salt <laughs> but i heard in someone's live stream that i think will was making a either he made a colorist joke about janet or he was making colorist jokes about janet i don't know i didn't see that come up on the red table talk uh, but then again this is you know I'm pretty sure Will Smith has the executive producer privileges to say what goes in and what stays out, you know, but I don't know, right? No. Um, but, you know, I do kind of feel like, I don't know, um, how can I put this? I feel like they both apologized, so they both admitted to having some wrongdoing, because I do think that Probably Janet has some, she wasn't 100% perfect, and Will wasn't 100% perfect either. Um, so it's good that they both 
apologized. You know, um, but I do kind of feel like maybe perhaps Janet. I don't know. Maybe she didn't handle it the best way that she could have. I don't know. Then some people are gonna come through and be like, "Well, maybe Will should have been behaving better." That is true too. Um, I think the thing is, Will is in a position to behave that the way he behaved. He shouldn't have been, but I think he was because he was like the star of the show, you know. And sometimes you do have to quote unquote know your position and know your rank in order to get through some BS. And, you know, we probably, uh, many of us has probably been there when it comes to our jobs, right? <laughs> and this was Janet's job, right? Um, but, you know, maybe she just wasn't feeling it and she was just like, hey, I'm too old for this ish. Nuh uh, you know. But I don't, like, what exactly popped off, though, that really started all this, though? I'm still sort of in the dark on that. And also, like, where was Uncle Phil at? <laughs> you know, like, seriously, though, where was, like, the actor who played Uncle Phil? Where was he at? Right? Because I had heard him um, getting at Will at one point or another, um, you know, about being respectful and things like that when it comes to, like, older adults. Um, <clears throat> so where did, where was Uncle Phil at? All right. But, um, you know... Shout out to Janet for being like Juilliard trained. I wasn't aware of that. You know, congratulations to J Janet for that. You know, um, too bad it seems like this sort of was like the highlight of the car her career and that's it. Like this is as far as it really went as much. Um, <clears throat> but then again, some people can say that about oh, like a lot of the um, cast of Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, right? This is kind of like their signature role, right? But, you know, to be fair, folks kind of went on to do other things. Like, you know, um, Hillary, the actress who played Hillary, and um, Tatiana Ali, right? Um, so, yeah, perhaps. Um, and then there were some people coming through saying, you need to pay her reparations, Will. Open your purse, Will. And I'm like... Nah, <laughs> nah, -uh. um, <clears throat> you know, take a hike, you know, you crumb them. All right, take a hike. So no, ultimately, I don't think. I think well, for one, I'm pretty sure Janice being paid for her, you know, appearance in the reunion as well as probably her appearance in the private session that they had too. Um, so I'm pretty sure she's getting paid something, right? Um, but as far as, like, paying her reparations, quote-unquote, for her career, no, nah, uh nah. -uh. Just my personal opinion, nah. -uh. <clears throat> you know, for one, how are we going to quantify what Janet Hubert would have made if not for the black ball? Or you know her reputation, or what do you, whatever you want to call it. How are we going to quantify that exactly? And as well, how are we going to subtract for the part that Janet Hubert played in it as well, right? And also, there were other people behind the scenes in that too. It wasn't just Will, right? So, yeah. But, um, speaking of colorism, you know, I brought that up earlier. I know, like, the fans of the show and people, they always say, like, oh, dark skin Aunt Viv versus light skin Aunt Viv. And I'm like, why are we, why are, like, folks really saying it like that? I mean, yeah, one is, like, lighter and one is darker. But can we just say, like, the original Ant Vib and the replacement Ant Vib or the old Ant Vib and the new Ant Vib or something like that? You know, <clears throat> but I think there are some people feeling like, oh, Janet Hubert was fired because she dark skinned. And I'm not saying that darker skinned um, black women don't face discrimination and um, biases um, and things like that. Not at all, um, you know. I very much 
speak on that on this channel. Um, but the thing is, though, she was hired. Like, folks knew she was dark-skinned when she was hired, you know. Um, and so I don't think that, you know, folks were just like, oh, she dark-skinned, you know. Um, <clears throat> but I will say that, you know, sometimes this can be like the being darker skin probably didn't help her since folks probably attribute like certain like negative stereotypes to people who have darker skin so i'm saying that probably didn't help her but i'm not sure if people just upped and said hey let's replace her because she's darker skin you know um but people may uh, you know speculated that um, partially because, like, the Aunt Viv they replaced her with, the actress they replaced Aunt Viv with, she is lighter skinned. So they were like, well, you know, oh, they, oh, yeah, I went with a lighter skinned, you know, black woman instead. Oh, oh. So it was like that, huh? And it could be. Maybe it is like that. I don't think that it was completely 100% like that. Um, but... I can understand some people saying, well, maybe they should replace her with someone who was had a similar look to her, right? Because I will say, you know, kudos to the cast of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and stuff like that um, for having, you know, a black woman be the darkest member on the cast. You know, usually when it comes to, like, the family shows aimed at black people, you know, black community, the black audience... Usually, the father is the darkest of the family, but in this situation, the mother was the darkest of the family. So I think that was a great thing too to sort of low key challenge the whole like, oh, dark is you know dark equals masculine type situation, because you really don't see that even like even in really in your day to day life, you probably don't even see it, but especially on the like television and in the media. You really don't see that when it comes to, you know, black shows and black family shows aimed at black people, you know, black audiences. Usually, again, usually it's like if someone's dark is usually the dude who's dark, you know, if someone's light is usually the mother. When it comes to the kids, eh, sometimes they'll throw in um, a darker skin daughter on occasions maybe maybe um maybe <laughs> but usually the son is like the darker skinned one and then the daughter is the lighter skinned one you know it's like the colorism that <laughs> there's a whole discussion on the colorism that is within black television shows you know okay. you know so you know again i'll give Fresh Prince of Bill Air, kudos for having that as like the original cast, right? Although I'll say that, you know, the replacement Aunt Viv or, you know, the next Aunt Viv in seasons three through six, um, I think that she fitted in very well um, as far as like her look. Um, I think I seem like it did kind of blend in, I guess, a bit better. I know some people are going to take some issues with that. I don't mean to offend anyone. Um, but I guess kind of like based on how the family looks. Um, but, you know, Janet Hubert, you know, she blended in well with the family too, you know. <clears throat> yeah. I personally like... Um, the Aunt Vid with in seasons three through six a little better um, than the Aunt Vid in you know seasons one through three, um, but you know a lot of people like the original Aunt Vid. But hey, now we have two Aunt Vibs, right? <laughs> um, so that's interesting. I wonder if they were to do like a um, reboot or something with the show. Like, how would that work? <laughs> like, oh, two Aunt Vibs. <laughs> but, you know, Uncle Phil ain't there no more. The actor who played him passed away a while ago. So that would kind of suck. <laughs> like, you know. <clears throat> you know, but I will say the original Aunt Viv 
you know, black don't crack. You know, she aged really well. You know, she aged better than the um <clears throat> the replacement at Vib though. Right? So if you want an eternally youthful woman, you better get the deepest, darkest, and blackest, most chocolatey is a woman you can find. You know, and your days in this land will be long and prosperous. Yeah. Um, but one more thing I want to talk about. It's not directly related, but it's still related, though. <laughs> so the actress, comedian Monique, she came out and she spoke about this a little bit and you know I don't mind Monique speaking about the situation you know she has a you know that's cool that's not really an issue um, but she kind of brought it back to herself and was like oh Tyler Perry you know you owe me an apology as well as Lee Daniels Oprah Winfrey and Lionsgate too um, yeah, Monique's still on this. Yeah, she's still on this. All right. Again, she's still on this. All right. Precious was over 10 years ago. We still on this. You know? <clears throat> and at one point, you got to find a way to just move on. You know, not saying that Monique isn't deserving of an apology from at least someone, at least from Oprah, you know? Because, you know, Oprah did some dirty stuff. And perhaps Lee Daniels, you know, perhaps Lion Gates, perhaps Tyler Perry. Um, but she brought this situation back to herself versus just, you know, letting Will Smith and Janet Hubert have their moment, right? And it sort of just took away from that a little bit. And I'm like, you know, Monique, you shouldn't do that. You know, you shouldn't be out there doing something like that, you know? You know, I would love to see Monique make a comeback and get to the place that she would have been had, you know, all the drama and stuff had not happened. But at this point, I'm not even sure if that's possible, you know, because I think she might have just done a bit too much instead of you know, done a bit too much, said a bit too much to the point where it's kind of like, okay, you kind of like burn too many bridges at this point. But again, then again, things are possible. So we don't know, you know, <clears throat> but, you know, I didn't know that Whoopi Goldberg was actually blackballed a while ago. I just thought she just stopped making movies because, you know, she just wanted a break or something. But yeah, Whoopi Goldberg was blackballed during the Bush administration because of a joke she said about President Bush. I didn't know that. And she said that she, it got so bad, she had ran through all her savings, you know, that she had and pretty much, you know, was running out of money. But um, she had said, like, Barbara Walters had offered her, you know, the job on The View. You know, and thus was really thankful to Barbara, Barbara Walters for doing that. <clears throat> so, you know, Whoopi Goldberg was coming from a place of being blackballed herself when she was trying to give Monique some advice on the situation. And I feel like she, Monique probably should have kept some of the things that Whoopi Goldberg said between them, you know. And I know that Monique didn't say everything that Whoopi Goldberg and she talked about. But she said enough, you know, and I think Whoopi was just really trying to help. You know, it may not have been the best help, but I think she was coming from a good place, trying to help and trying to get her, get Monique back into a good situation and just giving her some real advice about, you know, having to take some responsibility for this situation. Some, not all, but some responsibility for this. <clears throat> No. And as well, like, you know, telling Tyler Perry or saying that, you know, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry and Lee Daniels can suck her. You know what? If she had one, I'm like, yeah, I don't really. Yeah, you might get a couple of laughs on that, but I don't really think that's going to be helping you get any gigs anytime soon. You know, 
especially when those three people are probably offering black people like a lot of gigs, you know, a lot of jobs, you know. Um, but nevertheless, um, I'm going to bring this video to a close. But thank you for watching. Please feel free to comment and let me know what you think about this situation. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.